How's everybody doing? So I just wanted to show you this paper mache, which is actually falls under many different names like fast mash, cell clay, sculpt to mold. And it is by these guys right here. Sure, you can get it at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I get mine from Michael's. This is the fast mash. I really like the fast mash. There are a little bit of differences, but not much really. They're all commercial paper mache derivatives. Some are more gummy than others and some have more texture. I like this particular fast mash because when it dries, I don't know if you can see that with the white there, but it has a sort of earthy texture when it dries and it takes paint beautifully. Like you don't even really need to like you see this dirt right here, like that's what it looks like when you paint it. But you can add sand to it and you can feather it out. Like this is still a little bit wet. But here's the hard part of it that I did a couple of days ago. It just grabs to everything, like acrylic, wood, you know. And you can just shape it with your hands. It's just mix a bit of water with it. It's really easy to use. Okay, so see how I'm fairing in this area right here with wood strip? Like see this corner here? So that, let's make sure I'm focused here because this camera's, or this lens is funny that way. Um, so see how I frame that in? So I framed here along the court because there's a piece of quarter inch plywood going to drop right into this reveal here. And I'm going to build IPEX plastics as a separate diorama to fit into this part. You know what I mean? So I can take it down and work at my leisure and comfort on my bench. I don't have to get up on the step ladder like I have to to do some of this minor stuff, but it's not too bad. I can tolerate that. But see how I filled in that. So I did the grass section there, but it didn't like I didn't carry it all the way, but I had to pack it out. I added more balsa wood and then I just fared it in with cell clay right over top of the existing sort of soil texture and grass. And I'll just resoil it and re static grass it or repaint it. And then this driveway. We'll go into ipex plastic so i'll model it so it just drops in there'll be a seam there but i'll hide the seam with a fence there's a chain link fence that runs on there so i'll I have to decide whether i put the fence on the diorama base that drops in or on the layout i'm not really sure yet but i'll make that decision when the time comes and then this line along here sorry uh, this line that runs along here that will be uh, i can hide like there's going to be piping along here for like vacuum hose piping to unload the hopper cars. And then there's Jersey barriers and barrels. So I can hide that seam no problem as well. That way it comes out nice. You know what I mean? So yeah, starting to work on uh, the, I would say the east side of the overpass, the 204th Street overpass over Duncan Way. Somebody asked about that. Like, is that the name of your layout or the overpass? No, this is Duncan Way right through here. It goes underneath, and there's the photo. It goes down. I'm going to work in a photo, but I've got to compose the right size underneath. It's tricky, but I'll get it eventually, and I'll put it against the backdrop there, and then sort of hide, you know, tuck behind the building. This is a cardboard mock-up of iPad. I'm just getting the size right for the... This would be a three-quarter flat building, right? Not a, not a flat. Like, I use the term building flats. I don't actually use flats. I mean, that one is their part of the slum landlord, but it comes out of two or three inches. So they're not, like, flat against the wall, and a lot of them are angled. But this one, you can see it's going to have corners sort of coming out, and then, well, you'll see all that when I get there, but I like to do a cardboard mock-up first. But... This here has worked out. I'm glad I got this part done because now I can cut the quarter inch plywood plate. I'll verithane it both sides so it doesn't warp. And then I'll build this structure when I use these cardboard cutouts. I'm going to make it a little bit larger. This isn't tall enough because I put cars in here. Like, uh, I wonder if I can reach those cars from here and just show you kind of an idea. Okay, here they come. Like they're gonna go in like this, right? I can only get three in, but that's okay, because there's gonna be trees here and a backdrop back there, so that's insignificant. I don't need to model, you know, like the full length of the spur. 
I don't have that luxury anyway, and I don't really want it. I like it actually. Once this part gets set, there's going to be a landform terraform that comes right in here going up like this. And there'll be trees and like it's all going to look really cool. I like to create like alleyways and viewpoints, like sort of almost forced perspectives sometimes. But you can move around. So when you're down this way and you look down this way from that end of the road, you won't be able to see IPEX plastics unless you come down here with like along the tracks and then look here and then possibly under the over, you know, right? You know what I mean? So that's, this is what I'm talking about right now is a little bit of construction, uh, like above substrate construction and composing models and parts. But it's actually scene composition is what I'm showing you right now. You're just moving things, fixing things, extending things. Like don't be afraid to add or take away, you know, okay? Cheers.